Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Prove Your Faith. Beloved family, our text says, So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will prove that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Christ Jesus is revealed to the whole world. 1 Peter 1, 6-7 During the construction of the Union Pacific Railroad, builders had to construct an elaborate trestle across a deep canyon. After it was built, the chief engineer wanted to test it. A train loaded with double the normal train cars and supplies was driven to the middle of the bridge, where it stayed for an entire day. Someone asked the builder, Are you trying to break the bridge? He answered, No, I'm trying to prove that the bridge will not break. What a powerful image of how God desires to prove our faith while the enemy desires to break it. See, he wants trials and tests to come to us so that our faith, hope, and trust in God is broken. But Satan forgot one critical point. King Jesus prayed for our faith. Simon, Simon, Jesus says, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Luke 21, 31 to 32. This scripture is loaded with truth and revelation. Jesus said, I prayed for your faith. Then he tells Simon, you will turn back. When you do turn back, strengthen your brothers. Right before Jesus said this, he was telling the disciples, You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. But in the middle of this thought, King Jesus stops and says, Simon, Simon. That's like having a conversation with a friend and you just found out something that they don't know and you want to warn them or give them a clue. You might say, girl or boy, I got something you need to hear. This is what this was Jesus reaction. Simon, Simon, if you can hear and see what I can hear and see right now at this very moment. While I am conferring the kingdom on you because you have endured trials with me, ah, don't let that slip your ear gate. Jesus says, you, yes, you disciples, you are those who have stood by me in times of trials. Therefore, I am giving you a kingdom as my father gave me. Jesus heard in his ear that Satan was asking and requesting to save Simon. But what's standing out here to me is what Jesus said. Listen, let me submit this to you. When you are going through trials, it ain't about you. Oh, somebody is going to get this word today. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. John 15, 18 to 20. Listen, there are principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. They are the ones influencing the hearts and minds of men. 
If we are not in Christ, then we are pawns in their game. But they still have to ask permission. Oh, Holy Father, help me. They have to ask our Father God for permission. Jesus stopped and said, Satan, just ask the Father, can I please sift Simon? King Jesus just promised him the kingdom, so that gave me the right to tempt his faith. Ah, but Jesus says, I am praying for your faith, that after you have been tested by the Father or tempted by Satan, your faith in me will be proven, and then you can go and strengthen your brothers. King Jesus is always preparing his followers for the testing and even the temptation of their faith. He taught them to pray, lead us not into temptation. If we know that when temptation comes, God is not leading us, but he is following us. Ah, that's a good word. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, said David. Even if I walk into temptation or temptation walks into me. Hmm, you remember Joseph? He was minding his own business, working at the Potiphar's house, and his wife tried to seduce him. No one was around, and Joseph could have yielded to her advances. But as God was delivering him from evil, God told Joseph, run. This woman grabbed Joseph's clothes and was trying to strip them off him. God arranged his test in our lives to prove our faith won't break. God allows temptation in our lives, but Satan, he's tempting us to break our faith. But listen, when Jesus prays, you can take that to the bank. In other words, it is guaranteed success. That is if you believe and receive it and put your faith in God, not yourself or anyone else, because trust me, they will fail you. There is a spiritual hedge of protection around the life of the believer that can only be penetrated with God's approval. In times of testing, God wants to strengthen us through these trials so that we will be made ready for his service. Most of what we face comes as a result of living life in a fallen world. However, we must learn to say no to anything that would prevent us from living holy lives before a holy God. We must allow God to lead us, for he will always provide a way out, empowering us to say no to sin, or in Joseph's case, telling us to run. Because some temptations won't take no for an answer. You've got to run away from them. God proved his love for us by giving his only son as a sacrifice for the guilty verdict that he pronounced on mankind. Yet, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Everything in creation proves our creator. In darkness, God proves that he is light. In sickness, God proves that he is healing. In sorrow, God proves that he is joy. In hatred, God proves that he is love. In rebellion, disobedience, and loss, God proves that he is salvation. And in lies and deceit, God proves that he is the truth. So family, in every bad day that you are having in this season and in life, God still proves that he is good. The temptation and the test is simply to prove your faith. Is it genuine? Is it real? God is faithful. He has all power and he is good. No matter what happens in my life, and I mean no matter what, I'm still going to trust God. What about you? Trust him to prove your faith in him is real. Much love.